In the back room of a Beijing restaurant, I'm getting a taste of China's, well, let's call it eclectic culinary cuisine. Lots of food here. Mr. Chen just told me that this is stud bull penis. This is deer penis. These are lamb testicles. It's Russian dog penis. And this is just deer meat venison. Exotic, maybe, but perfectly legal so far. Now, Mr. Chen, if I wanted to order some tiger paw, tiger paw or tiger penis, can I order that here? He tells me they do not have it because the tiger is a protected species. Doesn't this say tiger paw here and tiger penis? They use the name, Mr. Chen says, only to impress their clients. I mean, we see tiger paw and tiger penis on the menu. Mr. Chen, though, is adamant that they don't have it here, and that's just a name. They won't let us back in the kitchen to actually see for ourselves. There's no way of knowing if, indeed, this restaurant serves tiger. But we do know it's happening throughout China. According to Wildlife Alliance, China is the number one destination for tiger and other endangered species. Fines are stiff, around $14,000 if you're caught trafficking. So the practice has gone underground. It's 5.30 in the morning in the southern city of Guangzhou, and business is booming at this illegal trading spot. We're trying to stay out of sight, but our cameras pick up images of vendors selling from the back of their vans. I'm with Craig Kirkpatrick of the Wildlife Trade Monitoring Network, Traffic. We decide to get out of the van for a closer look. Our arrival isn't well received. Dealers quickly disperse. Look over here. Hey, Craig, Craig. But we are able to catch a glimpse of some of the illegal activity, the sale of ferret badgers and civet cats. Baby civets, little baby civets here, and then the cat. The consumption of these animals is believed to be the source of the SARS outbreak in 2002, which killed at least 700 people around the world. Despite a crackdown by the Chinese government in 2003, the illegal consumption is growing again. So they're buying it because they want to eat the meat? Exactly. They're buying it for medicine purposes as well? Yes, it's, it's more of a generalized health tonic rather than a specific medic medicine prescribed for any particular ailment. Walking the legal markets in Guangzhou, it's easy to see why overexploitation is the number one threat to China's animals. Thousands of turtles, poisonous scorpions, and snakes fill the stalls. Dried bags of seahorse, shark fin, and deer tails pile up along the streets. There's even pillaging from other countries to satisfy the almost endless demand. It truly is a global trade coming in from Southeast Asia or from the United States. In this stall, endangered turtles from Madagascar for sale here illegally. This is illegal. Are the police going to come here and shut a place like this down? There's so many other priorities that they've got going in this very large country that's expanding at a tremendous rate. Wildlife trade just doesn't really register very high on their priority list. These animals aren't just delicacies. Many of them are consumed as a form of medicine. Practiced for thousands of years, traditional Chinese medicine draws on at least 500 species of plants and animals. I was brought up with Chinese medicine. Dr. Paul Butt is a professor at a Chinese university in Hong Kong. He's been studying the use of wildlife in traditional Chinese medicine for over 30 years. This is bear bile. Bear bile, yes, from bear, from bear farms. You can see it. Okay. They got it direct from the live bears. In China, over 7,500 bears are kept in cages while their bile is extracted several times a day through a steel catheter. It's a process that critics call barbaric. But traditional Chinese medicine uses it to treat everything from heart disease to impotence. In Chinese medicine, the bear bile has been used for maybe over 12,000 years and uh, still is uh, very good medicine. Dr. Butts not alone in his beliefs. 95% of hospitals in China offer traditional remedies. That, coupled with a growing Chinese population, causes concern that traditional Chinese medicine is driving species to extinction. This is really a dilemma because we too wish to protect those endangered species. 
But at the same time, it would be difficult for us to decide whether we should simply save them or in emergency occasions, ignore our child or our beloved ones lying sick in bed. You're saying sometimes it's worth it. Well, we have to find out. As a doctor, I can't say if these treatments work or not. Most are so obscure, they haven't been tested by Western science. But whether or not the Western world thinks they work isn't going to stop the practice. In fact, it's only growing. The market for exotic and endangered species is simply a matter of supply and demand. But it's a problem made worse when the number of animal species continues to decline and our own species, mankind, continues to grow at such a staggering pace. In fact, our population has grown by more than 400% over the last 100 years. And that translates into a breathtaking consumption of just about every natural resource this planet has to offer. And there are no signs of slowing down. According to a United Nations report, by the year 2050, there will be 9.1 billion human beings on Earth. That's nearly 50% more than today. It's not that there isn't enough physical space for that many people. There simply aren't enough natural resources on this planet to support everyone. Already, scientists say we're consuming 30% more each year than the natural world can regenerate. 30%, and that's at current population and consumption levels. Now, consider China. As its economy has exploded by 1,000% over the past 30 years, so has its consumption of nearly everything. China now consumes more meat, grain, steel, and cement than any other country. It extracts more coal from the ground than anywhere else. It builds roughly two coal-fired power plants each week. Scientists have long thought it would take decades for China to surpass the United States as the world's biggest emitter of carbon dioxide. Those scientists were wrong. A new report just showed China is already, right now, the world's largest CO2 emitter. But that kind of growth comes with a cost. 16 of the 20 most polluted cities in the world are in China. But the pollution's not just in the air. More than half of all the rivers here are severely polluted. According to Chinese media, 300 million people, that's roughly the population of the United States, do not have access to clean drinking water. The central government does recognize it has a problem with pollution and is looking to better balance its economic growth with environmental protection. But that's easier said than done. We're told to see some of the worst pollution is actually outside the big cities in some of the smaller villages, which is where we're traveling. In fact, there's a river called the Duliojin. It's a very polluted river, and we're told the water actually affects people's health there. After a couple of hours in the car into the countryside of China, we arrive at the river. Well, this is it. And the first thing that struck me was just how awful this smells. This is the Duliojian River. And just take a look at it. I mean, it's covered with this layer of black muck. It just looks dead to me. The problem is that a lot of people live around here. And while, in fairness, you may find rivers like this in the United States, they actually use this water here to irrigate crops. Outside the industrial city of Tianjin, brown, stinking water from local chemical factories was flowing into ditches near the river. We learned quickly that pollution is a touchy subject in China. As we left the river, word of our presence started to get around. So it didn't take long for the police to find us. 